Okay, so today you're in the polytunnel with Dan, and as you know, I'm very much into container growing at the moment. I want to help people grow things in containers, and some absolutely fantastic stuff can be grown within containers, because many people think because they don't have a large garden, or indeed maybe just have a small courtyard garden, or even just a balcony, you can grow some great stuff in some containers, and I thought I'd show you some of the things that uh, I'm going to do. So we'll start off with this here. Now, this is a hydrangea and I was given this plant last year and for whatever reason it just ended up in this small pot. Now it survived the winter, um, it did very well last summer and you can see these lovely healthy new shoots coming here. Now I love hydrangeas and they have these beautiful large flowers, absolutely lovely they are and they really can brighten up a garden. You know, you can have them in the ground, you can have them on a patio, and you, you know, just have them sitting on a balcony if that's all you have. So absolutely lovely things to do. And they do require a lot of water, but you can supply that even if it's growing within a pot. So I'll show you the growing medium that I'm going to use. Now, what I'm going to do is use some ingredients that are relatively easy for everybody to source. So let's have a look around here what we've got. So down here, I've got some vegetable growing compost, which, you know, relatively fibrous and it's nutritious as well. I've got some normal garden soil down here. Just dug this up out of the garden. Now, if you don't have a garden, maybe you can find someone who would kindly give you some soil. Maybe you could just go around a friend and say, can I have a, a bucket of soil? I'm sure someone uh, would give you some soil. And here, this is basic multi-purpose compost that I use for seeds, etc, etc, starting seeds. So I like to mix these up together in different concoctions, so to speak. And here, now you may or may not be able to get hold of this, but what this is, is this is wood ash from, say, a wood burner or a fire, open fire, etc, or from a bonfire. So if you can get hold of some of that, even better. So what I'm going to do is start off at the bottom. Now, with regards to growing hydrangeas in containers, what you want is you want the biggest container possible. You want around, you don't really want any less deep than 18 inches, but of course, if you can't get a pot that size or for whatever reason you can't afford one or whatever, you know, use any pot. As you can see, this one here has done well in this pot here and what I always say is it's better to grow something in a small pot than to not grow anything at all but uh, I find these are very good these buckets here and one thing I like about them very much is the fact that you've got the handles like this because if you're going to be moving these around which you more likely will be doing with regards to pots you want something relatively easy to to lift now what I'm going to do is show you what I'm going to put in down here but first some people like to put drainage stones at the bottom for a little bit of drainage to help the water leave the bottom of the pot but uh, I'm not going to do that the reason why I'm not going to do that is maybe because some of you out there have not got access to stones maybe you live in the middle of a city and therefore getting stones is difficult I know it sounds silly but that may be the case so if you want you can put maybe an inch or two of pebbles at the bottom so what I'm going to do first is start off with adding some of this garden soil. Now it's relatively heavy and my reason for using garden soil is simply because it can help to reduce your bills a bit if you can get some for free and when you're growing hydrangeas in containers which is a very very fascinating subject indeed because with regards to the pH you can help to adjust the colour of your flowers what they're going to be absolutely amazing it's a large area of study itself but on average you want to have around a pH of six to seven but um, later videos I might do a video on how to get different colors from your flowers on hydrangeas and it's really worth studying because you can get magnificent colors with hydrangeas beautiful blues pinks purples etc and whites and you really do want to be looking into that so what we've got here at the bottom is a little bit of garden soil there. I'm just going to break it up a little bit using the old Spear and Jackson trowel. And what I'm going to put in next is some of the vegetable growing medium. Now, the vegetable growing medium, it's a bit more expensive than the regular 
potting compost or the multi-purpose compost but what you will feel is you will feel the weight of it just the weight of these buckets the vegetable compost versus the multi-purpose compost the vegetable compost is much heavier indeed and that's because it contains extra nutrients that these plants will need because growing things in containers of course the plant has to get all of its nutrients from what's within the container so I think it's very important to make sure you put enough nutrients in it in order to sustain the plant for a decent amount of time because if, if you don't do that you know your plant it won't reward you with a lovely lush growth so certainly you want to be working on making sure your growing medium is very nutritious so I'm just putting that in there like that and I'm making sure it's spread. Now, my reasoning for putting the garden soil at the bottom is because it's likely that the garden soil has got seeds in it from weeds, some of which, and grass, etc., that you won't be able to see. So, at the bottom there, they're less likely to be able to grow up, and of course, the vegetable compost and the potting compost have been treated, so therefore they don't contain seeds. So you don't want weeds all coming up all over your <laughs> See that blowing off there, look, the wind like that. Uh, good grief. So yeah, with regards to, um, you don't want weeds growing up all over your, you know, all over your lovely plants, etc. A degree of weeds is inevitable, of course it is, but uh, you want to keep it to a minimum, that's my opinion anyway. So yeah, so I'm going to continue putting a bit more of this in here like this. Very nice to work with this actually. And one thing that you can, what I like to consider when I'm repotting is, in many cases it doesn't matter, but I don't like to use stone cold compost that's been outside. I like to leave it, you know, either in a shed or something for a few days before, or indeed in this polytunnel, which is getting quite warm actually the last few days. We've had about daytime temperatures of about 10 degrees C, 12 degrees C, so very good indeed considering the uh, cold weather that uh, we have had of late. So, putting that in there. Right, and what we're going to do now is put in a little bit of the regular potting compost. Like so. Okay, so this is the hydrangea here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently take this out in order to make sure that's it, that's about perfect there, sitting like that. And I'd like to just have a, a nice look at it like that. So have a nice, nice feel, now that's a good size. And what I'm going to do is just push that down in here like this. Now, there's a little trick that you can do if you want. So. We'll just put that there, it's no problem. It's got a nice established root. Now, I've got a little bit of water here, and this water has been sitting in this polytunnel for the last uh, 24 hours. And again, with this plant, it's not such an issue, but I don't like to shock plants using too cold water. I just think it's nice. So, um, what I'm gonna do is put a bit of water in there, because it's good to give plants a nice start when you are repotting them, that's what I think. And what I've done is last night I watered this. So this is relatively moist and, and water, plenty of water in here. So what I'm going to do is put that in there like that. Now that looks absolutely lovely, doesn't it? And I'm gonna to proceed to simply fill it up with the potting compost like this. See these weeds, look, you can take all them out as well if you wish. like this. You want to firm it down, you don't want any air pockets. It really has got a lovely established root ball on that. I can't remember where the person said that this came from. I think they said it came from one of them you know, bargain shops. And <clears throat> that's one important thing, because a lot of people have got the idea that gardening is expensive because they've got the wrong idea. They've went to places where the products, you know, Nine times out of ten are very good quality, but they are 
classed as expensive by people, but it doesn't have to be. And you can take hydrangeas from cuttings, and this may be a thing I might go into later in the year, but when you're gardening, you can you want to find ways of being resourceful, because it's, it, in my opinion, it's absolutely beautiful when you see gardens and small green spaces in areas that you just don't expect them. And I remember a long time ago seeing someone on the internet, no, I didn't, I read it in a garden magazine, and what he'd done is he had been growing things on his balcony. Absolutely amazing, and just the amount of produce that he had. He was managing to get from there, like tomatoes in window boxes and oh, so much that you can do. So, don't want to be covering too much of the bottom here. Nice and firm. Now that's going to look absolutely gorgeous, that is. Just like that. And we're going to get a bit more in. And you see, I'm using a lot of the multi-purpose compost for this because you know it tends to be the cheapest and with regards to where you can get multi-purpose compost from so many places now so you've got the obvious ones you've got B&Q you've got home base here in the UK um, I'm sure if you're viewing this video in the US you've got your own versions of those is it Home Depot they call it but uh, even here in the UK some of the budget places are selling compost now get them in co-ops buy them from garden centers look on the internet probably even get it delivered straight to your door so yeah really can look to uh, open up the world of gardening for you for yourself because it really is worth getting into in my opinion so yeah look at that look and that look nice just gonna make sure I take the bits of the compost away from like that And what I'm going to do is put some of the wood ash on. Now, I mentioned earlier about, uh, <clears throat> with regards to pHs of the growing medium for hydrangeas, and it's a big subject. And uh, as a beginner, it might not be one that uh, you know we should broach right now. But it's worth getting into once you've got your plant established, if you want to have a go with different colours. And wood ash can be one of those things that you can use to make your soil more alkaline. And the alkalinity of the soil can determine the color of your eventual flowers. But uh, as I stated before, if we go between six and seven at the moment, but again, if all that science worries you, you don't even need to worry too much about that, to be honest. You can just follow the guidance that I've done here. And the wood ash isn't necessary, I'm just using it because it's from the wood burner and I'm using it up. But um, yeah, nice simple approach to get you going. And I think, uh, this will be absolutely beautiful. What I'm going to do is just give it, I know I watered it in the hole earlier on, but I'm just going to give it a little bit more water. Just to, just to get it going. There we go. Obviously a watering can would be good for that, but uh, it's in the bucket now. So yeah, <clears throat> there we go. That is a video I've got for you for growing hydrangeas in containers. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you soon.